The ability to create beautiful, high quality book covers for your low content books really is essential if you want to generate any meaningful income selling them on the Kindle Direct publishing platform. Now, a great way to get professional looking results, even if you're not a professional designer, is by using seamless patterns that you find and download from a reputable stock image website and use them as the background artwork for your book covers. So last week I showed you how to find these seamless patterns and manipulate them for use for your book covers in Affinity Designer. Today I'm going to show you the exact same process, but we're going to do it in Adobe Photoshop instead. Using these seamless patterns is a great way to get those professional results, so let's go ahead and take a look. If you're new here, my name is Rachel Harrison Sund, and I help people generate passive income selling journals, planners, notebooks, and more on the Kindle Direct publishing platform. If that's got you interested, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos, which is each and every Monday. Before we flip the screen and get into the tutorial, I just want to point out that it is absolutely essential for you to read, understand, and adhere to the license that comes with any stock image that you download and intend to use on your low content books, particularly for commercial purposes. These different websites all have different licenses. Many of them have restrictions around how you can use them commercially. So it's really important when you're downloading an image that it is indeed suitable for what you intend to do with it. So again, be sure to read that license Make sure you understand what it means and stick to the rules, adhere to that license. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need is a high quality seamless pattern. My favorite place currently to get these from is from Creative Fabrica. They've got tons and tons of high quality graphics and background patterns, illustrations and whatnot. And they've got the best license for low content publishing. So I earlier already went ahead and downloaded this group of background patterns. So I'm going to open that now. You can see just in this one download, I've got all sorts of really lovely patterns to work with. So once I've chosen the pattern that I'd like to work with, I'm just going to go ahead, right click, and I'm going to open with Adobe Photoshop. Now all we're going to do here is we're going to go to Edit, Define Pattern, and then you can just leave it the name as is, or you can give it a different name, it doesn't really matter, and you're just going to hit OK. Next thing is we're going to create our cover file. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded a cover template file from KDP. So you can just Google KDP cover templates and you'll get onto this page. You'll be able to pick the size that you want. I did six by nine. However many pages your journal is going to be, mine was 150. Choose your paper color. I always like to choose white for these types of projects and then I'm just gonna download my cover template. So I've already done that and I'm just going to click on this PDF. And again, I'm going to open that with Photoshop. And you just want to make sure that your resolution is set to 300. If you want, you can swap that over to CMYK. It doesn't really matter because KDP will make that conversion for you if you don't. And then you'll just hit OK. So we'll go ahead and create a new layer. So we'll go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Pattern. And you can name that whatever you want or just leave it as is. Hit OK. And this is where the available patterns are going to show up. So you can see that the pattern we just added in the previous step is there. Now the really cool thing about this is the scale function. So this is what it looks like at 100%, but if you want to make that a little bit bigger, you can. Or you can make it smaller. But this really allows you to get some good mileage out of one seamless pattern. You could do a couple of different versions of this if you want, just kind of play around. I kind of like it about there, so then we'll just hit OK. Now we're going to just drag our template layer above the fill layer. 
and we'll reduce the opacity just so we can see what's going on underneath. And this way, when we're building out the rest of our cover, we're just gonna be able to see that template underneath and make sure that everything is going into the appropriate place. You can also go ahead and lock this layer just so that it doesn't move around on you. From here, all you're going to do is add any other imagery or text, logos, anything like that that you want to add. So let's just go ahead and create a super quick cover here just so you can get a, a sense of the entire picture. So the first thing to do that's just helpful so that you can center things properly is click in this top left-hand corner here and you're just gonna drag the guides over to where the dotted lines um, meet here. This is going to basically be the top leftmost corner of your cover. So, so the dotted line here just shows the trim size. Um, the, the vertical line here is just showing the edge of our spine. So now you can see the zero on our ruler lines up with the leftmost side of the cover. And this is a six by nine, so you can see zero to six here. Obviously that means three inches is directly in the center. So I'm just gonna drag that there so I'm able to line everything up that I'm uh, putting here. So my text and that sort of thing. Now, because this is somewhat of a busy pattern, I'm going to put a little bit of a rectangle behind the text that I'm using. So I'm just going to go over here, choose my rectangle tool, and I'm gonna go right to my center point and just drag that out. And we can fix the sizing uh, in a little bit, but just sort of eyeball it for now. And then I'm just gonna turn off my template layer just so I can see what I'm doing. Now let's give that a fill. So we'll go up here to the shape tool. Now this is only going to be visible if you still have the rectangle selected and make sure it is indeed on shape rather than path or pixels. And then just click on the fill. You can choose from any swatches you might have here, or if you wanna select a color from the pattern itself, you can use this color picker right here. Now this eyedropper tool, this is really, really great. Um, it really, really helps to keep your colors cohesive and ensure that any color you choose essentially is going to match. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose one of these darker colors here. See if I can get a nice, rich color sample. I will hit okay. And then let's go ahead and give that a border as well. So now I will go ahead over to the stroke and let's just first off make this a little bit wider just so we can see what we're doing. So this time, just for something different, let's go ahead and try using the gradient tool. So you can see that's just automatically put in a white to black gradient, which isn't very attractive. So let's go ahead and just make a couple of adjustments there. So I'm going to double click on the first stopper here. And again, I can use my eyedropper tool to choose any color I want. And maybe we'll do something a little darker like that. Hit OK, and then I can double click on the other stopper here. Maybe I'll choose something a little bit lighter. Hit OK, and if you want to rotate that gradient at all, you can just do that here. So I'm happy with that for now. Now I'm just gonna get rid of this blue ruler for a second, because I'm finding that a bit distracting. So on a Mac, that's Command colon. That's just gonna get rid of that. I believe on a PC, that's probably going to be control and colon. If that's incorrect and someone wants to correct me, please do so in the comments. All right, now let's go ahead and add a text layer. Go ahead and click the text tool. Now I'm just gonna start that right at the edge of my border here uh, of that rectangle and drag it all the way across. That's just gonna ensure that um, everything is centered. So let's just make this a daily planner just for the sake of example. Go ahead and choose whatever font you want. You can resize that however you want. And then we can go ahead and just choose another color. Again, I love using the color picker tool and we'll just Choose something like that for simplicity's sake at the moment. Maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. All right, I'm gonna resize that rectangle. All right, 
I'll do another text layer. And I think I might add a little bit of a separator in between the year and the rest of the type. So I'm going to go here and click on my line tool. Now I don't want a stroke around the line tool, so I'm going to deselect that. I'll go to fill. I'll just make that the same as the rest of the text. And then I can go ahead and draw that line. I'm going to hit shift and that's going to ensure that the line just goes straight across. Now that looks a little bit too thick for me. So again, I'm going to just select the line tool and I'm going to go to pixel height here. And it's at 10 right now. I'll do five. That's looking a little bit better. So now I'm just going to do some minor readjustments to positioning. And I'm going to have to adjust this rectangle one more time. And obviously you can fiddle around with that as much as you think is necessary to get it just the way you want. Now the last thing you might want to do here is to add a logo. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to turn my template layer back on again. And I got my nice little fake logo here that I'm just going to drag. Um, you know, if you wanted to set up proper margins here, you could. I'm just going to eyeball it for now. Turn off my template again. Now, obviously, you cannot see that. So what you can do is just double click on that layer. And if this is an EPS file, which is your best bet, you can just click on color overlay. And again, I can click here and I can just choose something right from anywhere on this pattern. This is really handy if you've got a one color logo. It's really helpful when you're making these types of covers because you can make the logo match to whatever cover that you've just created. So I'll leave that as is. Now this is a pretty busy background, so I might wanna just put something behind that logo. In this case, what I might do is just copy the rectangle I've already used. So I can click on that. I can do a quick Command or Control J and then I can just move that right down here. And I can just resize that. This logo is way too big, so I'm gonna go ahead and resize that as well. And you'll notice that even though I downsized that rectangle, the border is still the same size. So that's looking a bit thick. So I'm gonna go back up to my toolbox here. I'm gonna click on the rectangle tool and I'm just going to reduce the size of the stroke. Now let's go ahead and turn on the template one more time. And we're still in the safe area here, but I wanna make sure it's spaced properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that rectangle and the logo and I can just sort of position that manually however I want it. Again, if you've got margins set up, then I would um, you know, adhere to those. I'm just eyeballing it right now for the sake of it. We'll zoom out and just take a quick look here and make sure everything is within the safe zone. So that's everything that's inside of this red border here. Now I also want to point out because of the way we opened this file, we just right clicked it and opened it directly with Photoshop. That means that Photoshop has taken on the proper dimensions of this cover. So you'll see here, we didn't have to add a bleed or anything like that. The bleed was already included. You can see the dotted line here. That is the trim size for this cover. Everything on the outside of the dotted line, that is our bleed. So we can leave everything as is for that. And we're just gonna be able to export this now. Of course, we're going to want to turn off the template first. And if we're happy with this, we can go ahead and export. So you're going to go to File, Save As. You can choose Photoshop PDF. We can just call this B Cover. Now a word about the PDF presets here. You are going to want either high quality print or PDF X1A. You will probably have problems if you use press quality because when you use the press quality preset, it's not going to flatten all of the transparencies or, or anything like that you've got going on and your cover might get rejected by KDP. So 
you want to choose, like I said, either high quality print or you can use the PDF X1A. If you want to preserve the Photoshop editing capabilities, you can. That just means you can open up this file again and, and do some more edits. If you've already, if you plan on keeping the actual Photoshop file, you don't really need to do that. So I just untick it and then you can hit save PDF and let's go ahead and open that up. All right, so this is our cover. So as you can see, using seamless patterns that you download from a high quality stock website can really give you some really professional looking covers that you can use here. This is much easier than creating your own seamless pattern, which obviously is still um, an option for you if you're a little bit more creative and artistic and wanna create these seamless patterns yourself, by all means go for it. But for many that aren't designers or illustrators, this is an absolutely great solution to be able to produce really high quality, professional looking covers. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to find out more about how you can start generating passive income, selling journals, planners, notebooks, and more on the Kindle Direct publishing platform, be sure to download my free guide, Three Steps to Publishing Your First Low Content Book in Less Than a Day. I've left the link to that in the description below. Also feel free to join my free Facebook group. I'll leave the link to that in the description below as well. The Facebook group is called Low Content Profits, and that's where other like-minded low content publishers get together, support one another, answer each other's questions, and it's a great place to learn about this business model. Check out these videos next for more low content book design tutorials. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching.